time of the Women's College World Series at Oklahoma City. Good day to take off work early and catch a semifinal matchup. The Stanford Cardinal needing two wins to keep their season alive against the record-setting and very loose Oklahoma Sooners team, hoping to touch down in the champ series for the fourth straight year. The intensity of this truth is so sharp. You can feel it pressing against your heart like a blade. This is the biggest stage to play softball on. Each time it just gets better and better. Any role model you've ever followed has known the agony of get it done or get out. This is it. A three-run shot. <laughs> Summit all the fire and focus inside yourself as if there were never to be another game. Nobody happier than their pitcher, Nigel Kennedy. The best teams don't get lost in the reverie of the final game. They stay focused on the business of this one. It's win or walk away. Welcome to the NCAA Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. Jada Coleman and the Oklahoma Sooners looking to roll on into the championship series. The Stanford Cardinal out of the Pac-12 hoping to spoil the party as these teams meet for the second time in five days. And on Thursday, Nigel Kennedy at Stanford gave OU quite a challenge, but this hit by Jada Coleman, an RBI plus an error by Eliek brought in the only two runs of the game. And Jordy Ball would do the rest. Striking out 11 in an Oklahoma 2 0 win. But the first of two straight for the Sooners here at the World Series. That means OU needs just one win to advance to the Champ Series starting Wednesday. Stanford will need to win two today. Florida State needing one win. Tennessee needing two in our nightcap this evening. We're so thrilled to be with you once again for day five. Kevin Brown, two time All American. Amanda Scarborough with you. Just one win more for Oklahoma. Doesn't seem that hard of a task on paper. They've won 50 straight. They are chasing not only a title, but even if they won't admit it, they are chasing history here in OKC. Yeah, they are. This Oklahoma program and their team is turning into a bit of a dynasty, seeking a three-peat. Three national championships in a row is what they're going for. It seemed like ever since we had that shortened season back in 2020, D1 softball has been all Oklahoma. 50 straight wins this season. They do it in comeback fashion. They do it in run roll fashion. This is an Oklahoma team this season that bends at time, but they never break. A lineup that is filled with stars. The most notable in the postseason has been T.R.A. Jennings. Two World Series RBIs away from tying Josh Lalo's World Series record in their career, the tournament. An out of control 45 RBIs, 15 homers in just 31 games. Ridiculous offensive numbers. They are going to go against a team with ridiculous pitching numbers, though. We saw Stanford pitch very well against Oklahoma day one. They've been even better since. Back-to-back -back shutouts to make it to their third semifinal ever. Yeah, Oklahoma has all the offense at the World Series. And for, Stan and for Stanford, they're built around their pitching with a one-two punch of Elena Vodder and Nigeri Kennedy. This is a Stanford team playing in the semifinals, and they've only scored three runs at the Women's College World Series because Kennedy and Vodder have a combined .35 ERA at the Women's College. World Series with 25 strikeouts. They limit their walks. They go right at hitters. They bring two different looks. One of the strongest one-two punches that we've seen across the country. Elena Vaughter will get the start today after Nigel Kennedy's complete game yesterday, no doubt. If needed, you could see Kennedy for a Stanford team that's thrown 54 innings in the postseason this year and allowed a cool six earned runs. Seven total, the best in the World Series field and a crazy strikeout to walk ratio of 64 to 5. Oklahoma with back-to-back -back shutouts to get here. Stanford back-to-back -back shutouts after a loss. Who's going to score some runs today at OKC? The Oklahoma Sooners starting lineup presented by Capital One. It is the best offense in the country in, well, just about everything. The top scoring team in Division One again. The most home runs in the country, 114. 8.3 runs per game for this Oklahoma outfit. 
A whole bunch of All-Americans in there, and they are going to face an All-American in the circle. The senior, Elena Vodder, gets the ball for Stanford. Down ball pitcher, Elena Vodder. We've saw, we saw her earlier in the World Series pitch against Alabama and get the start. Oklahoma 58 and 1. Stanford 47 and 14. The Big 12 and the Pac 12 on this Monday morning. 11.06 local, our first pitch here in Oklahoma City on this Monday, June the 5th, where we will send two teams to the Champ Series. 79 degrees and brilliantly sunny at first pitch. Ball on a strike to Jada Coleman. Late umpire today, Dustin Douglas. And Elena Vauder will hope Dustin Douglas has a low strike zone with that terrific drop ball that has made her an All-American for the first time. Ball in. That's inside to Coleman for ball two. Isaac Kennedy got the start against Oklahoma, went five innings, allowed two runs on Thursday, struck out seven. Vauder pitched a scoreless sixth. No. Oh. Ah. Two and two. Finding that drop ball on both sides of the plate against Jada Coleman, who's showing patience. As you see her be aggressive, even in her first AB, took a drop ball in the inside corner, and then took a drop ball in the outside corner. The Big 12 Player of the Year, Coleman, will swing and float one right to first. Emily Schultz is there for a lineup. Well, you saw in that first at bat to Jada Coleman exactly what Elena Vodder is going to throw these Oklahoma hitters in this game. A drop ball on both sides of the plate and then a changeup. Yes, that pitch that was more up in the zone right there was a changeup. That drop ball spins over the top on the left. That changeup spins more toward the side. But you can locate that changeup a little bit up to change the level, the eyes of a hitter. Ball. Something that we saw her do against Alabama that seemed to work very well. Actually, don't see that too often, but worked well in that game. Combined with Nyjah Kennedy for a one-hit shutout of Alabama on Friday, 2-0. Oh. Here's T.R.A. Jennings, and there is that changeup. Jennings celebrating her 21st birthday today. No better place to celebrate it if you're a Sooner softballer than right here in Oklahoma City. Jennings pops it up. Shortstop Emily Young is there, and there are two outs quickly for Elena Vodder. Elena Vodder, early in this game, looks very confident. The one nugget that stands out to me about Vodder and Kennedy and the NCAA tournament is that 64 strikeouts to only five walks in the tournament. There is Nigel nice Kennedy. Certainly won't be surprised to see her at some point today. Haley Lee, <laughs> and another changeup <laughs> down to 49. That pitch is working early. And she's throwing at a few different speeds, too. Anywhere between 55, I've seen it thrown, and then that one at 49. Lee hitless in the World Series, 0 for 5. Ball. And a very good NCAA tournament coming into the World Series. Was 8 for 14 with a home run. Seven runs driven in and a couple of walks in the regionals and supers. A transfer from Texas A&M in her first Oklahoma year. Ball it's in. It's a little bit tight. Sooners team that starts seven right-handers, two through eight. Only Coleman and Boone at the top and bottom from the left side against the right-hander Vauder. And Lee with a pop-up. This is Ali Kaneshiro who snatches it at the last second. Three outs in the air and a very sharp first for Elena Vauder. Cardinal Bats coming up. USA Softball Hall of Fame Stadium from overhead. It's 36-year-old facility, which has aged quite beautifully, hosting the 11th game in the 2023 World Series in the Stanford starting lineup brought to you by Capital One. How about Sydney Steele, who's had a tough offensive year but has exploded in the tournament? An RBI double and a solo home run against Alabama on Friday night. Sydney Steele, one of just four right-handers in a lefty-heavy lineup. 
for Jessica Allister's Stanford Cardinal. Well, Jordy Ball got the ball the first two games for Oklahoma at the World Series, but with a little bit more margin for error, Oklahoma only needing to win one of two today. They'll turn into Cole May, and hey, a .82 ERA <laughs> is a pretty good option for a number two pitcher. Yeah, perfect on the season with an 18 and 0 record. Nicole May has stepped up her game this season. You'll see that she likes to throw her rise ball up in the zone, then her curve ball away, and then also her change up down in the zone. So the three different pitch mix that she gets her most swings and misses on in that red area, her rise ball, curve ball, and her change up down. She'll mix in a drop two. You see her really spread the zone with a few different looks to hitters. And her first look is away for a strike to Taylor Gindelsberger. One of six Stanford players who either are running out of eligibility or continue or choosing to end their softball careers after four years today. Gindelsberger, a fifth year senior out of Chandler, Arizona. Go ahead, oh, he's had a terrific World Series, four for nine. The pivotal stolen base yesterday in Stanford's one nothing win against Washington as well. He's the Cardinal with 69 hits, 16 doubles, and also six triples. This is not a big home run hitting team, but they will split a gap or two. What a two for Gindelsberger. Started out the year as the leadoff hitter for Stanford, and then they had moved River Mailer to that spot. And it seemed like in the NCAA tournament, River Mailer has a tough time seeing the ball. Move Taylor Gindelsberger back to that spot. She's been the hottest Stanford hitter in the postseason. That's her head coach down to third, Jessica Allister. Hands on knees, looks like she's ready to field a ground ball. <laughs> Probably is. Gindelsberger wakes back and slashes one in the right field. A leadoff base hit for Taylor Gindelsberger. Making that leadoff spot very much her own. She just can hit a little bit of everything in the postseason. So she gets a change up slightly out in front of it, but she's not completely fooled by it. So she's able to stay in her legs and stay on that pitch long enough to hit it hard toward the right side. Gindelsberger has just been on fire. And now how will Stanford play this after the hit? Emily Young squares to bunt, knocks it down foul. Got a couple of options here. Jessica Allister gives the signs, and the last sign is settled down, it appears. Gindelsberger, a terrific base runner, doesn't attempt too many steals. Nine for nine, and not many teams try to steal on Oklahoma. Young with seven sacrifice bunts on the year. And she'll swing away here and drive it out of play. Emily Young, another one of those fifth-year seniors. There are three in the starting lineup, Gindelsberger, Young, and then Emily Schultz batting first, second, and fifth. Stanford leaning on its experience here on this semifinal Monday. Senior Young from Mason, Ohio, third-team All-Pac-12 pick. He's a fifth-year starter for the Cardinals. Young drives one in the air to left field. That will send Riley Boone back near the corner, and Boone makes the catch. Outstanding play by Riley Boone to take away a potential extra base hit for Young. Can hear the fans saying her name that Boone covered a lot of ground out in left field, as she always does. This was a well hit ball by Emily Young. Very well hit, but Riley Boone. Used to this field, Oklahoma has played a lot of games on this field this year and over the past several years. You want to give us your boon again, just for fun? Not, not really. No. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll be honest. Appreciate your honesty as always. <laughs> Ali Conishiro, number three hitter for Stanford. Junior who is still in search of her first World Series hit. Pal, you good? Are you okay? Got a piece of Kinsey Hansen. You heard Dustin Douglas asking Kinsey if she's okay. She says yes. 
one of the best catchers in softball. Teams have only attempted six steals against Kinsey Hansen this year, and even though she's only caught one, her numbers historically are very good. So just the threat of her arm is enough to deter even base runners like Gindelsberger. Kanashiro started to swing Hansen will throw behind it first. And it looked like Kanashiro did hold up. So ball one. It's early in this game, but you start to think with the at bats that Stanford has had early in this game with Gindelsberger getting on and then Emily Young squaring up a ball that could be one of their only chances in this game with the way that they've swung the bat to scoring three runs in three games. Kanashiro out of play. Rawlings Gold Glove winner at the plate, Ali Kanashiro, who also has driven in seven runs in the NCAA tournament, team high. She was the spirit squad leader in high school back in Santa Clarita. She'd go to all the sporting events and rallies and get everybody fired up, which she told us in a meeting while sitting next to Taylor Gindelsberger and it took Taylor by surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor said, I, I thought you were just really shy the first month you came into college, but there is a little bit of that spirit and that energy in Ali Kanashiro, which I'm sure is always what you wanted uh, when you had a catcher. Yeah, I was going to say, she's still a spirit leader, I think, back behind the plate for this pitching staff for them. It's fouled off a couple of two strike pitches against May, and Kanashiro will hit one in fair territory here to Brito, gets the out at first. Gindelsberger's over to second, and there are two away. So the only Stanford player to bring home a run yesterday will bat. That's Kylie Chung back in the designated player spot. Snapped a scoreless sixth inning tie yesterday to beat the Huskies 1-0. Yeah, this was it. Right here off the bat of Kylie Chung. She had the game winner just out of the reach of Riley Holtorf. And Stanford would eliminate Washington. And Isery Kennedy pitched a gem. Just got enough against Ruby Malin, who was terrific for Washington. And Stanford now, after the first inning today, Working on 16 straight scoreless in the tournament. Chung, a player who, as Jessica Allister said, didn't sniff the lineup for a really long time. She's made her mark late in the year. I know it too. Chung hits a long fly to left. Sending Boone back. And this ball is long gone. Oh, what a start for Stanford. The game winner yesterday. One to the moon in the first, and the Cardinal have the lead on number one Oklahoma. Stanford in this inning have had such good at bats with two strikes. Gindelsberger got it going on a 1 2 count, and now Chung hits a home run on an 0 2 count. They are seeing this rise ball well out of the hand of Nicole May. Built on Emily Young's fly out to left field. She barreled that pitch up and then Chung sends it out of here. A hit that just was on time and stay above the ball to get to that rise ball with two strikes. Stanford is expecting it and they score first. And teams at the Women's College World Series this year have had a lot of success with scoring first. And fear the tree is the chant from the fans clad in Cardinal behind the third base dugout, some of them wearing trees on their heads. Kylie Chung silences the majority of this stadium and fires up the traveling party from Palo Alto. Oh. Emily Schultz with a pop up out of play. Uh, there is just not much home run power on this Stanford team. They have now 26 home runs which is only one more than Tennessee's Kiki Malloy. But you look at this number, their pitching is so good, they don't typically need to have more than a little power. Oh 
Phelps drives one at the middle. That's a solid base hit, and Stanford has another two-strike hit against Nicole May. She's getting ahead of them, but she's not being able to put them away. Another two-strike hit for Stanford. Nicole May has been 0-2 or 1-2 to every hitter that she has faced. Bit of an off-speed pitch there on the outside corner, and Emily Schultz stays on it and drives it to center field. Stanford looking so good with two strikes. Caitlin Lim tries to bunt her way on. You showed that Nicole May heat map at the start of the game. It had more red areas, more areas where she gets swings and misses than anybody we've seen in the tournament. She's such an unpredictable pitcher. Right now, Stanford, it almost seems like they know it's coming. It just doesn't seem like they're being fooled out on really any of her looks right now. And coming into this game, too, Nicole May had the highest left on base percentage in Division I at 94%. Left on base percentage. I mean, that number is just staggering with the year that she's put together. People have gotten on but had a hard time getting all the way across. It's going to two strikes on all six hitters now. Oh, and Lynn takes a rise ball out of the strike zone for ball one. If you didn't expect this kind of a start, you're not alone. That is the beauty of this game and the beauty of this stage. Hey. Expect the unexpected in Oklahoma City. The Big Bad Sooners winners of 50 straight take a little dent in the first inning, courtesy of Kylie Chung. Kylie Chung just has put this offense on her shoulders the past couple of games. They might not score a lot, but they make those runs count with their pitching staff, Chung, with the home run. Welcome back to Oklahoma City. Big day here on this Monday and getting the start in the circle for Stanford, Elena Vauder. And it's a memorable moment just to make it to the Women's College World Series, but an emotional moment earlier this week when she got some amazing news. Yeah, well, it means everything. Um, but I mean, gosh. It's okay. Take your time. Take your time. It's a big deal. It's a really big deal. Yeah, it means everything. Um, I mean, Coach Nyberg is one of my best friends on this planet, and I think, I mean, her and Coach Alistair just have absolutely believed in me from day one. Guys, I know all of us watching that, we all got emotional right there with Elena. She is the first All-American at Stanford since 2015, and she got the news in a press conference. What a great surprise. And talking to Jessica Alster about what Elena Vauder has meant to this program, it's been incredible. She's the leader of this bullpen. She's the biggest cheerleader for her fellow pitchers. And I was talking to her mom, Susie, who has the big tree on her head, leading all the chants right now. And she said, look, when I watch Elena pitch, when the pressure builds, she she gets better, and I couldn't be more proud. Well, the pressure is on today, Courtney, and I think Susie's going to be pretty proud of that first inning. <laughs> Elena looked terrific. She throws a strike to Alyssa Brito there. Out of Kansas City, Missouri, as a high school sophomore, was committed to Texas under Connie Clark. The Longhorns made a coaching change to Mike White, and she reopened her recruitment. Right around the time that Jessica Allister went to Stanford, and what a perfect match it has been. It has been, and I think for Vodder, it's just all about her consistency and just being able to put the ball exactly where she wants to. Of course, she has that exceptional changeup, but knows how to set hitters up with that drop ball and changeup mix. Ball. That changeup seems to be working for her today. She's throwing it early in these ABs, and she's throwing it often. All three outs in that first inning, a soft line out and two pop outs on the changeup. This is a player she's faced 10 times before, Alyssa Brito. They met in the Pac 12. Ah! Another changeup. <laughs> Missed it the pitch before. She goes right back to it on that 2 1 count to get the second strike to Brito. Mm, that pitch is working today. She's not taking long. She's ready to throw it. Good job. Good Rito job. back in the box. Three for eight with a walk 
hit by a pitch career against Vaughter. Couple of strikeouts. Ball. And Brito works it full here. Alyssa Brito, a first time, first team All American. Amazingly, Oklahoma's only unanimous first team All American pick. On base all nine postseason games, including the Big 12 tournament. All four. And Brito takes a walk. A leadoff walk. Nobody more excited for a walk than Alyssa Brito, who tried to spike her bat into the core of the earth on a walk the other day. <laughs> Tosses it aside here and gives the Sooners a leadoff base runner. It's one thing that Coach Gasso talks about this team, the way that they celebrate not only the big things with the home runs yeah, and the strikeouts and the wins, but all the little Sanders. things. Like a walk like that to Brito. <laughs> Sydney Sanders now takes a sharp strike one. One of their most patient hitters, Sydney Sanders. Batting average of 296, but an on base of 447. 32 hits, 25 walks. Sanders trying to wait back on that change up here. can see where Emily Young, the shortstop, and River Mailer, the second baseman, playing up the middle of the field, playing to a double play. The amount of ground balls that Vodder throws, they have the potential to turn it with a runner on one. Ball. Trying to sneak it over the outside corner. Sanders, a uh, First team All-American a year ago, 21 home runs at Arizona State. Not the same kind of power year, but still gets on base a ton. <laughs> and she takes a call third strike. The first punch out for Elena Vaughter. Tell you what, Oklahoma has taken a lot of pitches early in this game, and you could tell that they're maybe a bit confused with this changeup that Vaughter is throwing to both sides of the plate. Sanders takes it there on the inside corner. And Mom loves it, of course. First strikeout that she's seen her daughter have in this game. How hot do you think that tree is right now? I would say really hot, and it's just going to get hotter by the minute here in Oklahoma. It's 79, and it's going up. One on, one out, Kinsey Hansen. <laughs> and a first pitch strike taken by Hansen. I can tell you guys, Susie does get very nervous watching these games. Um, not sure if that is the top of a real Christmas tree on her head, but it looks like there's a furry hat underneath it. Uh, it feels very heavy, and it's pretty hot down here. I think it says fear the tree on top, oh, too, yeah. if I'm reading that oh, right. Oh, yeah. Little bit in. Little bit in. Courtney, is it uh, hotter under that tree, do you think, or under the umbrella that you currently have over your head right now? And that thing acts as an umbrella right there. Christmas parasol. The All-American Hanson to the right side for a base hit. A walk and a hit in this inning for the All-Americans Brito and Hanson. Trying to get the Sooners right back into it. Just firing up this crowd when their offense starts to get runners on base. This crowd gets even louder. Now two on for Oklahoma after this Kenzie Hanson hit toward the right side, side stays on this drop Good ball. Line drive hit gets her barrel down to that pitch. Kenzie Hansen has been so good in the NCAA tournament for Oklahoma, actually leads their team in RBI in the tournament. Wow. Grace Lyons. Good pick by Kanashiro to hold the runners in place. Lyons has had a tough postseason at the plate. Two for 17, two walks. Ball. <laughs> Senior captain who has been a mainstay at shortstop. Fifth year at Oklahoma. Ball. Water is just missing that bottom of the strike zone. Ball. 
Ball four. A four pitch walk. Walk, single walk, and the Sooners have loaded him up with one out. That's a good time for a timeout with Tori Nyberg, the pitching coach for Stanford, and former teammate Jessica Alsters at Stanford. Patty Gasso will use the opportunity to bring her team over as well. Early in this game, Oklahoma has been taking a lot of pitches. I just don't feel like they're swinging as much as what we saw whenever they faced Kennedy the first time for Stanford, whenever these two teams faced each other. And took quite a few pitches, quite a few strikes, actually, in the first inning. Then Brito being able to draw that walk, took some close pitches, and then a four-pitch walk to Grace Lyons. Stanford has been brilliant pitching with runners in scoring position in the tournament. Oklahoma has been brilliant hitting. Alina Torres with a couple in scoring position and one on as well to boot. And Torres looks at a strike. In the NCAA tournament, Oklahoma as a team is hitting 471 with runners in scoring position with an OPS on base plus slugging of around 1,500. Hitters against Stanford, 6 for 42, 146 Ball. with runners in scoring position in the tournament. Important for Stanford defense not to panic here, still have of ways to turn a double play in this situation would be best case scenario for Vodder in the Stanford defense. Middle infield is back, hoping to turn two. And Torres hits the ball in the air to right field. Lim is underneath it. Brito will tag from third. Lim's throw is to the plate, and Brito is safe. Hansen goes second to third behind the play. Oklahoma gets a run back on a sacrifice fly from Alita Torres, and it's two to one. Good situational hitting there by Torres. Runner at third base, less than two outs. All you need to do is put the ball in the air to the outfield, which can be so tough against a pitcher like Elena Vodder, who against her with a batted ball profile, about 70% of the balls off the bat go on the ground. So easier said than done to put a ball in the air to the outfield against her, but Torres, the RBI. Do you think Lim had a shot there, or was the play to the middle infield on that throw? Yeah, I think the play would have been to the middle infield to keep Hansen at second base instead of at third. Oh. So now the nine hitter, Riley Boone. Great producer of energy in the nine spot. Great producer of runs as well. 493 on base percentage. Had a triple against Tennessee. Drove in a couple of runs. Oh. Strike two. Good grief. 8% of plays Oklahoma has trailed this season. Ball. A ball to Boone. Lyons is going to take second, and Kadashira will not throw through with a runner at third. So a free base for Grace, her seventh steal of the year and seven tries. Does eliminate the force at second as well. Hun. Thursday afternoon it was Riley Boone with two out and one on singled on a 2 2 pitch against Nyjah Kennedy that set up the game winning hit from Jada Coleman a pop up here Schultz drifting in foul territory she's got it Oklahoma gets one but strands two two one Cardinal. A decade of dominance the likes of which this sport has rarely seen 
The Oklahoma Sooners since 2013, five championships, nine seasons. Back-to-back -back titles in 16 and 17, and in 21 and 22. Made it to the champ series in 19. Sharon Backus' UCLA Bruins, 88 to 90, the only team to three-peat. Oklahoma needs a win today to get to the champ series finals, but Kylie Chung's home run has put a little dent in that dominance early for a 2-1 Stanford lead. Back in the first inning on an 0-2 count, Kylie Chung sent this one deep, a rise ball off of Nicole May. Stanford scoring first. They Taylor Gindelsberger got on their leadoff hitter and started that little rally. Three hits all came in two strike counts. A 1 2 single for Gindelsberger. Chung and Emily Schultz with 0 2 hits. Stanford Cardinal three runs in the first three games at this Women's College World Series. Two runs in the first inning today. The first runs allowed by Oklahoma here at the World Series. This is Sidney Steele. It's been their hottest hitter. Drags one to Brito in front of the third base back. What did you see in Stanford's at bats in the first inning that you hadn't been seeing the first three games? Looked to me like what I saw in supers and regionals. They went up with a plan and were able to execute now, that plan. I, I saw them put up 20 runs in the regional, and then, of course, they put up 10 runs in the super, but they had a plan able to execute it even with two strikes. Knew what they were looking for. A lot of confidence in the box. Ball's yeah. out. Ball one for Ellie Eck. Because we haven't seen their offense turn on here at the World Series, and of course they face just top-notch pitching every game that they've played, but it scored 30 runs in regionals and super regionals coming in here. Hit well against Florida and Duke. Stanford coming into the postseason was 114th in the nation in scoring. They jumped 15 spots heading into the World Series. And they've since plummeted another 20 spots at the World Series. Fewest home runs in the Pac-12. But Kylie Chung with a big one early. A pop-up butt right back to May for an easy second out. River Mailer in search of her first World Series hit, the nine hitter for Stanford. See you. That first inning for Stanford, scoring two for Oklahoma, only the third time in 60 games this season they've given up multiple runs in the first inning. First time in exactly a month they'd given up any runs in the first innings. It's May 5th versus Oklahoma State. Another 0 2 count. And this time May wins it. The second strikeout finishes a 1 2 3 second. Top of the Oklahoma lineup coming up. Semifinals, Oklahoma needs one win. Stanford needs two to advance to the champ series Wednesday. Florida State is undefeated. They'll need to beat Tennessee one of two, the ACC and SEC champions at 7 Eastern, 6 Central tonight. Florida State's first 2-0 start ever at the World Series. They were the champions in 2018. They lost in the champ series to this Oklahoma team in 2021. Tennessee beating Oklahoma State 3-1 yesterday to stay alive. A fly ball here. Jada Coleman in the center field, and this game is tied. Jada Coleman, the Big 12 Player of the Year, delivers a long ball against Elena Vonner. And two is not going to win it today. Yeah, 
Pullman took that first strike she saw on the outside corner and then Vodder tries to go inside. It's clearly the side that Coleman was looking for. It's where Vodder tried to throw her early in the count, her first at bat two, and Coleman goes hunting for it. On time, that ball flew off of her bat. A line drive home run for Coleman to tie up this game. Her 17th of the year, tying her with Brito and Jennings for the team lead. And her third career home run at the World Series. Now T.R.A. Jennings to third, played well by Sidney Steele. Look at how she gets her barrel down to this inside pitch, drop ball right at her knees, maybe a little bit elevated. She's trying to get it for a strike. And Coleman, she says on this field, she loves to just scream and shout and let it all out. This song. Yeah, that's a Britney Spears <laughs> Will I Am song. Don't act like you didn't know that. <laughs> Told us the first time, Jada, that she ever made it to the World Series two years ago. She literally screamed on defense on the first strike. <laughs> Had to scream it out to settle back in. Here's the thing, Vodder needs to keep going to that changeup. It's a pitch that made her successful the first time through the order against Oklahoma when she was throwing it for a strike, and she threw it a lot, threw it about 50% of the time the first time through the order to Oklahoma. And on the year, the amount that she threw it was about 20%. So you can tell that she's throwing that pitch more, a lot of confidence in that pitch, and when she's throwing it for a strike, she's having a lot of success. Just bounced one to Haley Lee, who fouled out to the catcher, Kaneshiro. Well. It's so interesting to see the different personalities right here in the lineup. You know Jada Coleman's energy and how it fuels Oklahoma. And then you come to Haley Lee, who Patty Castle wasn't sure about her, but she let Haley Lee introduce herself to her. She's been a great addition. We were told, though, she makes some crazy noises in the dugout, guys, so she has to stand away from Patty. A cartoon voices, what we're told. Right back to Vonner for out number two. And Lee is over two. Sometimes it cuts it. A good job by Vauder after the home run to get a couple of ground outs. Four year player for Stanford does have another year of eligibility left. His plan to use it. Another change up. Needs to keep throwing it until Oklahoma proves that that's a pitch that they can get on time with and that's a pitch that they're looking for. I would keep throwing that pitch. 11. Alyssa Brito walked and scored in the second. Dead, dead ball, dead ball. Everybody clap your hands. With a changeup, I wonder how much do you risk throwing it too much and making Oklahoma comfortable with it? I just haven't seen one good swing on a changeup. They're taking it, they're way out in front of it. I think until you see them look more on time, it, that could be a foul ball too, but not look so far out in yes, front of it, I would continue to throw it. And she can spot it in different places too. That was a better swing on a changeup right there. I like the way, though, that she's worked this at bat, started her with the changeup, then went hard and in with her drop ball, low and in. And another changeup, so it's gone change, drop, change. She has a rise ball that she's thrown more this year, but just doesn't throw it at time. That would be a good time to throw it, though, and I'd throw it up and well out of the zone. Yeah! A drop it's dead, and she strikes out Brito. 
three in a row retired to end the inning. But Jada Coleman starts the inning with a bang. She is the playmaker. She gets this team going both defensively and offensively. Jada Coleman ties up this game, a line drive home run for the Big 12 Player of the Year. Tie ball game here at the Women's College World Series. The pressure can build up so much for these teams. So a really unique opportunity has happened the last two Women's College World Series. A program called A New Leash on Life has partnered up and come and visited these teams with therapy dogs. Um, David Rudkin is the scheduling coordinator. He reached out to the teams last year. All eight of them was able to visit with six teams. He did the same this year in Oklahoma. Got to visit with several therapy dogs yesterday, actually. And I said, you know, how do they provide therapy? And he said, when you're petting a dog, Amanda knows this, you don't think about anything else. The pressures of the game, of school, of your performance, it's a weight lifted. So a nice opportunity for Oklahoma and several of the teams to pet some dogs. And I know Amanda's really upset she wasn't invited. <laughs> and it was, I think it was at our hotel, too, and we missed out because I think we were here, but. I feel I feel devastated personally as well. <laughs> really cool. Yeah. All the teams have gotten to do it, too, Courtney. So Oklahoma did it yesterday on their day off. They watched a little softball, had a few therapy dogs. I mean, what a day, softball and dogs. I mean, that's that's my kind of day personally. Is there anything better in the world than that? You know, I've got to give a shout out to Shep, by the way, who's watching at home, I'm sure. <laughs> oh. Taylor Gindelsberger leading off for Stanford in the third. Emily Young, Ali Kanashiro to follow. So the second time through against a Cole May, who's retired four in a row after some early trouble. Two run homer for Kylie Chung in the first. Gindelsberger goes up to get a rise ball right to the glove of Boone. Now Benny shortstop number two, Emily Young. Emily Young, the Stanford shortstop now. Hard line drive out to left field her first time. Yeah. Foul. Young is one of these three fifth year players that didn't play Jessica Allister's first year, but they were really her first recruiting class. Came in her second year. Gendelsberger, Emily Schultz, and Young. Really the backbone of a program that had to rebuild when Jessica Allister took over, coming over from Minnesota. And Young was a great high school hockey player, says so she still doesn't know how Jessica Allister found her in recruiting came here as a third string catcher played some outfield finally settled in at shortstop and Jessica said the first day of practice it was apparent she was the best athlete on the team oh, yeah Jessica Allister actually got the job in late July she told us and back then too it was just a different recruiting time with different rules but it's all the whirlwind and she came in and just had one tournament left in the summer to go out and recruit. So she and her staff got out, got to work, started to put some pieces together to build back up this program. Good. Young the other way, Coleman got a great jump and flagged it down. Stanford has one of the best athletic departments in the nation, but the Cardinals softball team had not been to the World Series since 2004 when Jessica Allister was a player. She called this her dream job. Fourth NCAA tournament in the last six years. They didn't have any in the previous four. 14 wins in the pack, their most since 98. Regional host. Three seasons before Jess came here, Stanford was 4 and 68 <laughs> in Pac 12 games. And a lot of success 
under John Rittman from 97 to 2014. He resigned after 2014. Rachel Hansen took over for three years, just the four Pac-12 wins. And here is Jessica Allister. Oh, out. And Stanford right back. And the center of the conversation nationally. And how about two Kevin that they don't have any transfers? This is the last time that we saw a team in Oklahoma City that didn't have any transfers on their roster. Oh. Oh, an Oklahoma team that is bolstered by transfers. Most teams here at the World Series are. Stanford, obviously, because of the stricter academic requirements, has a much harder time accepting transfers. Oh. He wanted it. Two and two. Not many players transfer out either of Stanford. Not much better than a Stanford degree when you're going into the real world. Nerd Nation, they profoundly, proudly call no, themselves. I got you, I got you, I got you. Wait, so this isn't the real world at the World Series in Oklahoma City? Well, this is a different type of real world. You know, heightened reality. Never want this real world to end. How about the um, the job world? Yeah, I guess yeah, this is pretty that real. will eventually come along. This is real. <laughs> it is spectacular, Hall of Fame Stadium. The greatest show on dirt. Oh, that's a called third strike to Kanashiro. And Nicole May starting to roll now. Seven in a row set down. Thought she had got the outside edge earlier in the at bat for the strikeout. So then she lived on the inside edge. Looks like a rise ball low and inside. Freezes Kanashiro for the third out. We've got a tie ball game here, Stanford and Oklahoma. And we're talking now with Stanford head coach Jessica Allister. And coach, we saw Kylie Chung with the two run home run. What's been so great about her at bats recently? She's had a lot of success. She's taken aggressive swings. You know, I thought she probably took a pitch, that first pitch that she wanted. Um, and then it did a good job not chasing the change up and then was ready on the next pitch. So, uh, you know, hitting it, I keep saying it, but it really is simple. Just put a good swing on a good pitch. Uh, and she's working hard to do that. Elena Vodder in the circle for you. I mean, she handles the pressure so well. How have you seen her grow in that area? Well, I think she enjoys it, you know, and there's no reason for her not to feel anything but confident um, on any stage against any team that we're playing. She's had a ton of success, um, and I think she's embracing the moment and, you know, pitching aggressively and competitively. Thanks, Coach. Awesome. Thank you. Through three innings, Elena Vodder's changeup has by far been her out pitch and her get ahead pitch to get Oklahoma out in front of that pitch. She's throwing it for a strike. She's getting them to swing at it, and she's also getting them to take this pitch a lot. They have not figured out this pitch through three innings. She's thrown it about 50% of the time, getting them out in front of it and then off the end of their bat. A lot of soft contact with that changeup. Six of her nine outs have been off of the changeup. They're saying five, six, seven here in the fourth. In this 2-2 game, and right on cue, another changeup taken for a strike. What is it about that pitch that has Oklahoma so off balance? I think it's just the way that she keeps her arm speed up on it and also just is not slowed down whenever she gets to her release, pops it out of her hand. They're clearly looking for her drop ball, and she's giving them a heavy dose of changeups. Ball. I think, though, that pitch right there, the way that she went more up, don't know if that was on purpose, but that can be a helpful pitch to change their eye level to set her changeup up better and also her drop. Pitch is being called in by Tori Nyberg. Sanders right through a high changeup. I actually like it when she throws it high, and we saw her do that against Alabama, get some swings and misses, but even that changeup was changing their eye level. You see something that's more up in the zone, you think it's going to be more firm than what she throws her changeup. Ball. Yeah. 
And Sanders struck out looking on a changeup, her first at bat. And she knocks the changeup out of play here. Just so many, one right after another. And it's what complements Elena Vodder, you know, with her own pitch repertoire, but also with Nigerie Kennedy and what she throws. Kennedy being more up in the zone at 70 plus miles an hour with her rise ball and Vodder pitching more down with her drop ball and change up. In a year, Kindlesberger in center field has the first out. The NCAA Women's College World Series Championship Final begins Wednesday night, 8 Eastern, 7 Central on ESPN. For more information and game times, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Smoking some balls over the mini field out there. Wiffle ball is always fun. You always like to see yourself hit it over the fence, you know? Wiffle ball, doesn't matter. I like the idea of me having ever hit it over the fence. <laughs> it's, it's over the foul fence. Yeah, and now we'll start to look for better swings like that. We saw Brito have a better swing on her changeup, and then Kinsey Hansen still out in front of that pitch, but a better swing than what we've seen early in the game. Remember, Hansen also took that drop ball to right field. Time, time, time. Kenzie Hansen, who's delivered so many big hits in her career. First team All-American. Oh. And a high school miss softball in the state of California in 2019. One of the many players from the OC Batbusters program, Orange County, come to Oklahoma. 24 home runs a couple of years ago. Oklahoma hitters trying to slow Vodder down. She works pretty quickly in between pitches. They'll get up to the box and they'll step out, take their time to get back into the box, make her wait, versus them feeling like she's rushing them. You can do that if you're a hitter. This has been a point of discussion. There's been a lot of talk the last few years about improving pace of play. Particularly after changes made in baseball. Could some of that come to softball soon? Hanson right field, another opposite field ahead. Off the glove of Lynn, but she'll hold it first, and Kinsey Hanson has two singles. Kinsey Hanson has just seen the ball so well in the NCAA tournament and then also off of Vodder. Her first hit was on a drop ball on the outside corner. This was on a changeup. It's left more up in the zone, and it gives her a chance to sit back on it and drive it the other way. Good piece of hitting there by Kenzie Hansen. And now a runner aboard for Grace Lyons. Oh. This is where Jessica Allister's mind probably starts to turn. Vodder's been great, but we know how good Oklahoma is. Dory Nyberg's going to come out for a visit. There is Nigeria Kennedy in the bullpen. At what point do you give Oklahoma that completely different look with Kennedy's rise ball, knowing that you have to win two games today to advance to the champ series? Yeah, I think that if you can get two times through the order and keep the score tied like this, then you bring Kennedy in late in the game. We've seen Kennedy in every game that Stanford has had. Even when Elena Vodder got the start, Kennedy came in relief. They like to use her late in the game. Here's what she did on Thursday against Oklahoma. It was one of the better pitching performances the Sooners have seen all year. Haven't heard Patty Gasso praise too many opposing players the way she praised Nigeri Kennedy after that game. A lot of uncomfortable swings for Oklahoma hitters. And for Alabama hitters and for Washington hitters in the game since. Lions is drilled. 
Lions a walk and a hit by pitch. And now the Sooners have two on with only one out. Grace Lyons just looks like she takes this right on the kneecap, right on the side of the knee. Oh. Took it like a champ. It's not that soft a ball. No. No. So Oklahoma with the go ahead run at second here in the fourth. And Alina Torres, who's got a sacrifice fly at the plate. Ball, Ball one from Vonner. Torres, along with Sid Sanders, Arizona State transfer. And Gasso told us she's a real free and easy player, Alina Torres. Freshman of the year waiting behind the gate. Oh. This could be Potter's last batter with the way that she's fallen behind and just losing her command all of a sudden. And here comes Nigel in from the bullpen. Can't mess around too much and give up too many runs against Oklahoma because Stanford's offense is such an issue scoring runs. Just don't score a lot here in Oklahoma City. 3-0 changeup for a strike. I think she could throw that pitch pretty much with her eyes closed today. Torres a hitter though this year that has seen changeups well. Nine for 18 on changeups. Will Vauder double up here on 3-1. This will go a little bit harder. From 3-0 to full. Amazing how one pitch can make a count in an inning feels so different. Changeup got her back in it, drop ball inside, got her two strikes, now has an opportunity. And out. Hansen and Lyons, the runners, on a 3 2 for Torres. And a ground ball to third. Steele gets one. Steele gets two. 5 3 double play. the beauty of having a drop ball pitcher, a down ball pitcher in the circle like Elena Vodder. Runners at first and second creates that force out at third. Steele touches third and then throws it across the diamond. That was a changeup and a full count. That pitch has been working all day long. My head coach, Patty Gasso and coach, how are you seeing your hitters adjust to the changeup from Elena Vodder? Uh, I think we're, you can't be in two different rhythms or look for two different speeds. So you got to kind of pick it, and that's kind of what you're seeing right now. Nicole May settling into this game. What has stood out to you? Uh, composure. I mean, she gave up the two-run home run and came back, and it's been stellar. So the team showed we've got her back. We come back, score two. So she's settling in really nicely. Thank you. Thank you. Nicole May has just been mixing her pitches up, down, and changing speeds. This is her drop ball that she's been moving down in the zone, has adjusted that pitch to use it earlier in the count, and then go to her rise ball later in the count to get swings and misses. Also mix in the spin of that curve ball. But more emphasis, it seems like, after that first inning on her spin and getting more swings and misses settled into this game after that home run. She's retired seven straight after three of the first five reached. A home run hitter now, Kylie Chung, who takes ball one. Middle of the Stanford order, Chung, Emily Schultz, Caitlin Lim, a sophomore and two seniors. Ivory Kennedy on the bench for Stanford, talking with Tori Nyberg, her pitching coach. Perhaps we're going to see Kennedy in the fifth. Good. After she threw in the bullpen in the fourth. Jessica Mendoza the other day was talking about, was it just yesterday it all blends together, but the last time that she pitched, Jessica Mendoza was talking about how Kennedy loves to have all of the information about the hitters 
the more information, the better, even all the information that's hard to hear sometimes as a pitcher, like the really good hitters that you're about to face in the lineup of Oklahoma and how she wants to attack them. That's Vauder who's worked four really strong innings. And one for Chung. Oh! Looking to reach base for the second time after this swing in the first inning. Yeah, it was on a rise ball. Look at the pitch location. It's up in the zone, but it's out over the plate. And Chung sends it out over the left field wall. Five home runs out of her 19 hits on the year, Kylie Chung. Chung hits one to the left side here. Good pick by Brita. What are you seeing right now with the late of all? Emily Schultz. Yeah, guys, so you see that thing on her left hand. Amanda, we noticed this yesterday with Nyjah Kennedy, and so I went and talked to the Stanford training staff. It's a cooling mechanism. Your body cools the fastest through your hands and your feet, so it doesn't matter which hand you put in there. It's going to cool your whole body down. Of course, as a pitcher, you want your left hand in there because you want your right hand as a right-handed pitcher just perfect. You don't want to mess with it at all, so you do it on your left hand, your left hand. I was wondering though, thanks Court for getting the scoop on that. My mom even texted me about it. And I hate not being able to give my mom an answer on things. And those shots to short. Looked like uh, Elena was wearing an oven mitt at first. <laughs> Look, when Sally Scarborough and wants to know right something, here. we deliver, guys. Yes, it's a must-deliver situation. We're on it. <laughs> Never seen something like that, though. Definitely stood out when we saw when we were watching together yesterday, Court. Like, what is that? We need to get to the bottom of it. There's a pop-up from Lim, and Nicole May is still on cruise control. Her third straight one, two, three inning. A 2-2 game with three innings to go. And the home run hitter from earlier, Jada Coleman, will take her swings in the fifth. Against which pitcher? You can count on Jada Coleman for an instant impact on the base paths in center field or at the plate. Her third inning home run has tied up this first semifinal game of the World Series, and Coleman will bat second in a 2 2 tie here in the fifth. Oklahoma needing one win to advance to the championship series for a fourth consecutive World Series, have a chance to win a third straight title. Stanford needs to win this one, turn around and win the if necessary game. And Elena Vauder will stay out there with Nyjah Kennedy in the dugout. She's going to face Riley Boone for a second time. Coleman and Jennings after that. Kennedy, the freshman of the year nationally, certain looks, uh, certainly looks ready to go when needed. Boone up the middle, and we'll see if she's needed now. Leadoff base hit out of the ninth spot for Riley Boone. Here comes Jessica Allister. Twice through the order is enough for Elena Vauder. The second team All-American. Pitch terrific. Mom loves it. And now the Stanford crowd will roar for Nigeri Kennedy, the nation's leader in ERA with Stanford season on the line. If it wasn't interesting enough already, the plot has thickened in Oklahoma City. No qualified pitcher in college softball has a better earned run average than 0.48. It doesn't seem real, but it is. <laughs> Nigeri Kennedy, the freshman out of Topeka, Kansas, gets her second crack at the Oklahoma Sooners in this World Series. And Nigeri Kennedy is all about her rise ball, which will give a completely different look than what they just saw to Botter with her drop ball. It's why they complement each other so well. That rise ball leads 
more with the pinky, it's what she'll throw, and then Vodder leads more with the palm of her hand to get that over-the-top rotation, just completely different look out of the hand of Kennedy. It's what has led to her success in the Women's College World Series. That rise ball has led to 19 strikeouts in OKC. One of those strikeouts against Jada Coleman, who did drive in the game-winning run against Kennedy on Thursday. I did talk to Patty Gasso before this game. If they were to see Nija again, what have they been working on? And she said, look, we just got in the box and worked on speeding everything up. When are you going to load the timing piece of it? They cranked up the pitching machine, so they weren't surprised by the heat that she throws in the circle. That's what they worked on yesterday, guys. Said she was one of the hardest throwing ball moving freshmen she's ever seen. Coleman gets underneath one here at 71 miles per hour. And Coleman flies out for the first out in the fifth. And you see the way that Coleman swung at that first pitch. Take a look at the first pitch before the out pitch. This is the way that Kennedy was making OU look in her first appearance against it. You just don't see that from Oklahoma. Back-to-back -back rise balls. She gets Coleman to chase after it two pitches in a row, and it's the out pitch for her. See, she slams the back down. They know what they're going to see from her, and she's still going to give it to them. Here's Tiare Jennings, who was 0 for 2 against Vauder. That rise ball pops out of the mitt of Kanashiro. And Riley Boone takes second base. We talked about the different looks out of the hand of Vauder versus Kennedy. And we talked about what that's like for a hitter. But how about for a catcher who actually has to catch it? Now you're catching 75 up in the zone. Kanashiro expecting that potentially to be a little bit lower, but this is a big adjustment for the Gold Glove winner back behind the plate to receive. Only her second passed ball of the year. And it puts a runner in scoring position oh. as Jennings takes a strike. Remember, we talked to Kanashiro coming into the World Series about catching Kennedy, and she said, Kennedy has movement I've never seen before. One and one for Jennings. Good rip by T.R.A. Who struck out swinging and flight out in three at bats against Kennedy on Thursday. Ninth relief appearance of the season for Kennedy her second here at the World Series. And she strikes out Jennings on a pitch that we didn't see a whole lot of on Thursday against these Sooners. A Vonder esque changeup. Did we forget to mention the changeup? Oops. 75 at your hands, and then she drops it down to 50. I mean, that pitch is just not even fair. Two down for Haley Lee. Ball. You're looking at a 20 to 25 mile per hour difference if she can spot that pitch and throw her rise ball as hard as she can throw it. And about 71 to start this. That's a strike also at 71 to Lee. This season, Kennedy has faced 46 batters in her relief appearances. She has struck out 27. It's allowed two hits, three walks. One and two. And it's her command, Kevin, to not only get the swings and misses, but to locate her curveball whenever she needs it. She'll also mix that pitch in with her rise ball. It's so good in relief this season. Winning in two thirds, hitless against Alabama to close out a one hitter on Friday. Threw a one hitter yesterday against Washington. Ball. And she threw another changeup, Lee. Did not swing on the appeal down to Mike Burwell at first. I think that this pitch fooled Haley Lee. Could have even fooled Dustin Douglas, the home plate umpire. And that looked like it was at the knees. Should be a strike. Haley Lee holds her barrel back. Get the call. The 2-2. Two -two. 
Lee, left field, that will hang up in the air just long enough for Eck to check it down. And Kennedy retires the top of the order in order in the fifth. A 2-2 tie through four and a half here in the World Series semifinals. Nicole May has been terrific after a rocky start. Elena Vonner got the start, was terrific for Stanford. Nyjah Kennedy with a scoreless inning of relief at back of her in the fifth. It's still up for grabs here with Oklahoma one win and Stanford two wins away from the Champ Series beginning Wednesday. And the Cardinal who took it to Nicole May early have not had a base runner since the first inning. Sydney Steele will try to change that in the midst of a terrific NCAA tournament. Steele, Eck, and Mailer. Stanford 7 8 9 to try to solve May. Nobody solved her since Emily Schultz's single in the first inning. Three for five to start for Stanford, and then Nicole May. Reminding us why she's an ace. 0.82 ERA coming in. She's retired 10 straight. Popped up by Steele. Rito is there. Make it 11. So much soft contact, too, that Nicole May is inducing. Ground balls off the end of the bat. Easy pop up there. Patty Gasso talks about the way Nicole May can mix her pitches. Said, look, she's not a big strikeout pitcher, although she does strike out more than one in an inning, but just doesn't get squared up very often. And a swing and a miss to Ellie Eck there. First pitch strikes now 12 out of 17 for May. Making her ninth appearance at the World Series. Struggled a little bit on this stage coming in. Yeah. Out. Into today, 6.43 ERA for Nicole May at the World Series. 16 and two thirds innings, 15 runs. Another bit of soft contact. Hansen didn't see it initially, and with the mask on, has the second out. The next ESPN 30 for 30 film, The Luckiest Guy in the World, a four part series taking an unprecedented look into our colleague and basketball Hall of Famer Bill Walton. First two episodes premiering tomorrow night, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, here on ESPN, parts 3 and 4, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, next Tuesday. Yeah, at one point Nicole May's ERA was point four. Or, yeah, it was point forty two. Her freshman year is two point forty five. Pinch hitter Ellen Nado will bat and Jen Roach is out. We appreciate that Jen gets out to the circle very quickly. Associate head coach. Terrific pitching coach under Patty Gasso, who has always had one of the best staffs in college softball. Her son JT Gasso, one of the great hitting coaches in the game, had a Sparks volunteer assistant this year. Good hustle by Coach Rocha. Calls pitches so well for this pitching staff, develops them. We saw her do it at Florida, win a couple of national championships there, and now bringing over her expertise to Oklahoma. Doing it big. Doing it big, doing it quickly. Can't knock the hustle. Ah! Strike to Nato, who is batting for the struggling River Mailer. Ella Nadal, only two hits on the year, two for 26, two walks. Pinch hit yesterday, made an out. So Jessica Allister trying to get her going again. Yeah. Oh. Stanford program that is at the World Series for the first time in 19 years. Playing a third straight elimination game. 
Back to back one hit shutouts to get into the semifinals. Two nothing over Alabama on Friday. One nothing over Washington yesterday. They are the lone team remaining from the mighty Pac-12. In fact, four different conferences are represented. Second time that's happened in three years in the semis. Big 12, Pac-12 here. And coming up tonight, the champions of the ACC and SEC with Florida State and Tennessee. Last year, the semis were filled with three Big 12 teams. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Texas, along with UCLA. Three and two for NATO. And NATO lofts it into center field. And it's 13 in a row set down by Nicole May. Two innings to go. Two runs apiece. The champ series and seasons and careers are on the line at OKC. It's been a bit of a guessing game at this year's World Series to try to guess who's going to start. I think we've gotten a lot wrong. Well, I wasn't going to take away credit for us, but <laughs> thanks for the peek behind the curtain. <laughs> Alyssa Brito knocks one out of play. All right, well, I'm going to make you guess now because I'm going to put you on the record. Who will start for Florida State and Tennessee tonight? Go Kat Sandercock for Florida State. Mm. And Peyton Gottschall okay. for Tennessee. I think Peyton Gottschall starts as well. I'm going to say Lonnie's got a trick up her sleeve for Florida State, but we'll see. Maybe a little McKenna Reed. Maybe. Good we do not see Oklahoma's A start in this game. They don't start Jordy Ball with some margin for error. Very, very good chance if there is a second game, Jordy Ball would start it. But for Patty Yasso, a deep staff, thinking she is probably going to need somebody besides Jordy Ball to win this World Series, goes with Nicole May here. It's a deep staff for Florida State. We'll see if they go with Kat Sandercott from the start or not. Rito just barely got a piece. If we do get Kat Sandercock, and look, at some point today, we're going to get Kat Sandercock, whether it's the first inning or not. We'll get Kat Sandercock, an All-American, who's allowed a 184 average. Kiki Malloy, an All-American, who has a 416 average with 25 home runs. That is enticing. Oh, I think a good pitch right there. I think, too, the way that Mac Leonard has thrown late in the season, too, has been pretty good. Yep. Maybe give her the start, and then there's a second game, then start Sander Hawk for that second game, or bring her in late. A lot of different options when you have a pitching staff of seven different arms that you've used this season. And will we see Ashley Rogers again after 136 pitches yesterday? A lot to sort out. That's tonight, 7 Eastern, 6 Central. Demo! Right now, Brito Demo! against Kennedy, and Brito got hit. Up and in, and she'll fire up the Crimson and Cream as she Jogs down to first to lead off the sixth. Brito has been on base two times in this game. Drew Walk back in the second, and then now this hit by pitch. Guys ball just coming up and in on her hands, trying to sneak it in there. You have to be so careful in the inner half to these Oklahoma hitters just work the edges and sometimes even a little bit too far off the plate like that. A more timid bat spike by her standards. <laughs> Sanders squares to bunt. It's a great job by Hanashiro on that. You could tell that she was setting up on the outside corner. That pitch went back in, and she was still able to get it a cold strike for Kennedy. Strike out and a fly out against Vauder for Sanders. And another called strike. Now 
Isaac Kennedy pitching for the fourth time in five days here at the World Series. Ball. 99 pitches Thursday against Oklahoma held him to two runs, one earned in five innings. Vaughter a scoreless six, and Stanford held Oklahoma to two that game. So far, they're doing to OU what pretty much nobody else has done this year. And here is some mathematical proof. <laughs> 11 runs per game against everybody else in the NCAA tournament. It's two per game against the Cardinals so far. The nation's second best ERA is a staff, only behind OU. Sanders swings through a floating changeup. Nisery Kennedy has two strikeouts on changeups. That pitch has gotten better as the year has gone on. That pitch, that changeup has gotten better as the World Series has gone on. Getting Sanders a deceptive pitch. He's thinking a different speed, maybe thinking that that was going to be a curveball. Instead, Kennedy pulls the string and gets Sanders swinging on the changeup. Both of her strikeouts today have been on that changeup. Jennings first, and now Sanders. And one on one out for Hansen. Ball is in. And if she could get that pitch call for a strike, if she's going to that inside corner quite often against these hitters with her screwball or a low rise that she's throwing, maybe just a little bit off the plate, not getting it for a called strike. If she was getting that pitch for a called strike, it would open up the outside corner even more for her. We've seen Nyjah just continue to get better and better and more confident as the season goes along. And Jessica Allister told us she came in with great pitching mechanics, and that really helps. And also something that I thought was interesting, too, she said, Amanda, was she is very aware of her body, so she can make really fine-tuned adjustments. I imagine that's helped her a lot perfect her pitches. She can make little adjustments. And Coach Alistair said, too, that Nyjah just understands pitching at a really high level. Strong fundamentals, those good mechanics, just an overall good understanding of pitching. I think a big thing, too, for Kennedy is her teammates love her. They love to play behind her. They struggled tremendously hitting off of her in the fall. And they know what it's like to hit against her, and it's not easy. Jessica Merchant's the hitting coach, and Jessica Allister said the other day that Coach Merchant was about to tear her hair out working with the hitters in the offseason. So she said it makes her happier and happier that Nyjah continues to do it against other people. They had belief in Nyjah Kennedy from the start, recruiting her all the way from Topeka, Kansas to Palo Alto. A one two here for Hansen. It's a great take. I mean, the bats that Kinsey Hansen has had in this game have been the best out of anybody on the OU team. Slugging a cool 780 on the year coming in. Two opposite field singles today. Just got the call of time off, and Jessica Allister is furious. Yeah, it's because Nigeria Kennedy had already put her hands together and was about to go into her pitch. We've seen that so many times, I feel like, in the postseason. And Stanford's just got an official warning from the plate umpire, Dustin Douglas. They've been, these OU hitters have been trying to control the tempo and the pace of both Vodder and now Kennedy. I had a feeling as soon as he called timeout that the Stanford coaching staff was not going to be happy about it. Did not take long for an official warning there. But you can certainly understand Jessica Allister's frustration. And now everybody in the park's getting heated. <laughs> two and two to Kinsey Hansen. And she goes down swinging. 
a little extra surge of emotion from Nyjah Kennedy, who is still screaming after unleashing an unholy rise ball. She'll do the Nyjah stomp after her strikeout, goes back to her rise ball, yeah, even after Kenzie three. Hansen took it, brought it a little bit more down to make it more enticing for Kenzie. There's the stomp and the coaching staff for Stanford. Big reaction, too. One out away from escaping the inning. It's Grace Lyons who drills the first pitch to the inning. My, oh, my. Did the temperature just rise by a few degrees here? Is that a play on the rise ball for the strikeout? It was or? not. But thank you anyway for making me sound <laughs> smarter than I am. Ball. Kennedy's now struck out 10 Oklahoma batters in six and two thirds. Which is the most strikeouts a single pitcher has had against Oklahoma all season. Grace Lyons chases one way out of the zone. And Kennedy is one strike away from completing his scoreless sixth. Guido the runner at first with two outs. And Lyons drills it foul. She was all over it, but way out in front. It's a good time to mention the stat that Nyjah Kennedy has only given up one home run all year, and Oklahoma has hit 115 home huh. runs this year. You felt like it was a good time to drop that one in, huh? <laughs> Washington's Kelly Lynch, the only one to do it. Three straight strikeouts in the sixth inning for the freshman of the year. Jessica Allister said that Nyjah Kennedy has yet to see a challenge that she does not shy away from in this sixth inning. Gets three strikeouts, one on the change, one on the rise, and then she shakes off a pitch to get the last one on the rise ball. Grace Lyons chases out of the zone. The greatest inevitability in college softball these days has been the Oklahoma Sooners, but this plucky band of Stanford underdogs lovingly calling themselves Nerd Nation, trying to stave off inevitability, trying to survive at least for one more game with a championship series on the line. Oklahoma one win away, Stanford two wins away, and we have a 2-2 softball game for you as we head to the bottom of the sixth. Kevin Brown, Amanda Scarborough, Courtney Lyle, our ESPN crew. It's been a dandy, and it just got a little bit dandier if you're wearing cardinal colors. Taylor Gindelsberger, the first Stanford base runner since the first inning. A leadoff single against Nicole May. A second hit for Gindelsberger, who snuck it past one of the greatest second basemen in the nation in Jennings. And that ends a streak of 13 straight, retired by Nicole May. And will that end the day for Nicole May? Looks like it. Hattie Gasso is out. The third time through the lineup for Stanford. What's Patty going to do here? She's going to go to Jordy Ball. Well, if Stanford can bring in their National Freshman of the Year, why can't Oklahoma bring in last year's National Freshman of the Year? The All-American Ball gets the ball, takes the circle when we return. Oklahoma and Stanford all squared up at two. And the Sooners turn to their All-American out of the Cornhusker State. The sophomore Jordy Ball who shut down and shut out Stanford on Thursday afternoon. And yeah, you think about what Jordy Ball has done in the 
postseason at point two nine ERA in the 24 innings that she's pitched. It's two runs one earned strikeout to walk numbers 30 to three. Ball. Emily Young takes one inside. So five plus innings for Nicole May who goes twice through the order plus a batter four hits two runs for the moment did not walk a batter struck out three. Forty eight out of sixty six strikes gave up that two run home run in the first and went into shutdown mode after that. Young left side that one sneaks past Brito for a hit. They elect not to use the bunt here Stanford this time and it pays off brilliantly with a sizzler down the line for Young. First and second and nobody out. I was just looking at where Emily Young was standing in the box. Look at how she's so far away from the plate clearly looking for the inside corner. I saw where she was setting up. She was hoping Jordy Ball would throw it hard and in, and she did. She gets her barrel there, and now you see where Kanashiro is standing too, well off the plate. And Kanashiro right back to Ball. She'll go to third and get the out there. No hesitation, no fear as Ball cuts down the lead runner, Gindelsberger. Jordy Ball is so athletic. He could probably put her anywhere in the field and she would be making plays at any position. Good communication by the OU defense to get the force out the lead runner at third base, especially with Gindelsberger's speed. Not an easy play. I mean, she'd be one of their best hitters if she was a full time hitter, Ball. She's 13 for 32. She's a pinch runner sometimes. She's an amazing athlete, and she showed it off there. So first and second, one out. And Stanford's going to use a pinch runner here. Emily Jones will come into the game at second to run for Emily Young. Emily Jones. Jones now running for the Cardinals. And Stanford has its home run hitter at the plate. A batter who's driven in the Cardinals last three runs of this World Series including the game winner in the sixth yesterday Kylie Chung oh! first pitch strike hit a home run on a rise ball against a May earlier in this game it was out over the plate Chung with aggressive swings as coach Allister said about her in last night's game and then in today's game three RBI in the last two games for Chung. A home run and a ground out for Chung today. That's a rise ball. Did she swing? She did not. You see too that Chung is right handed hitter standing well off the plate just anticipating that Jordy Ball likes to throw inside to righties when you watch her throw a lot. That's a side that she likes to go to but Ball combated that with the first strike of the at bat went with an outside drop ball to get ahead for that first pitch strike. Pretty far off the plate again. And she takes one in the dirt. How, how different is the position of the right handed hitters today compared to what you saw against Ball on Thursday? It looks very different, noticeably different. Because they've seen her before. I watched a lot of film, saw how they were getting out, making adjustments here with where they're starting well off the plate. Jones and Kanashiro, the runners. And Chung to the left side, caught it short by Lyons, safe the play at second. Grace Lyons ranging into the hole, the Rawlings Gold Glove Award winner grabs the second out. Again, being aggressive on this inside corner, and Chung, seeing it's going to be there, tries to get her barrel there, and Grace Lyons playing just a touch up the middle of the field, had to range over toward the hole. Now Quick throw falling to the outfield to try to get double her off at second. It's close, but it's definitely safe. Very good base running by Jones to not get doubled off two. And keep the inning alive for the fifth year senior Emily Schultz. Ball. 
you could tell that Stanford is just so prepared offensively in this game. Right out the gate against Nicole May to start this game, they had a plan and executed it. And now right out the gate facing Jordy Ball, they know what they want to do. They're very prepared. Schultz takes a strike. Fifth year senior, 249th game of her career. Originally a Loyola Chicago commit. Jessica Allister changed her mind when she got the Stanford job. Schultz is well late on strike two. between Ball's Sooners and Kennedy's Cardinal. A, a star in the making, truly. She was a star all season, the best ERA in the nation, but getting to do it now on the biggest stage in college softball has been something truly special to watch. A 2-2 game, Oklahoma's 8-9-1. Batting here in the seventh, and Alina Torres misses another Kennedy rise ball. Riley Boone will follow, and then Jada Coleman. And remember, Boone and Coleman had singles. Coleman, the run scoring single, in that decisive fifth inning against Kennedy on Thursday. And Oklahoma is chasing that rise ball out of the zone about 50% of the time since Kennedy has entered this game. Remember, too, of just Vodder started the game. She's more down, down, down in the zone with her drop ball and change up, and then to see Kennedy and worry about her rise ball, it is such a different look, and it's so difficult for a hitter. And 0 2. Torres golfs it into left field. That's hit deep. That ball is off the fence, crashing away from Mac. Torres in the second. She missed a home run by not much at all, but Oklahoma has a leadoff double in the seventh. And this was on an 0-2 pitch. She decided to go down in the zone. It's surprised that she just didn't go to her rise ball well out of the zone. It's a screw that's low. It stays down, and Torres gets her barrel there, protecting with two strikes. It's the contact, and it just continued to travel over the head of Eck out in left field who tries to make one of the plays that we've seen out in left field at the Women's College World Series for years, but she misses it. And Oklahoma's in business. And Torres will be removed for a pinch runner after her ninth double of the season. Avery Hodge now represents the go-ahead run at seventh. Stanford six, seven, and eight hitters are coming up against Ball, so to state the absolute obvious, you got to get a zero here if you're Nigel Kennedy. Well, and despite winning 50 games in a row for Oklahoma, there have been times this season where their backs have been up against the wall in the seventh inning. You go back to being down to Texas in the seventh inning, they came back. Being down to Oklahoma State, they came back in the seventh. And then, of course, the most memorable one in Super Regionals game two against Clemson, a mighty comeback for them. They find ways to get it done. 13 come from behind wins this season. They trailed this game 2 0 after an inning. Coleman on the left there had a home run to tie it in the third. And now Riley Boone out of the ninth spot will bat. Oklahoma only has four sacrifice bunts on the year. Boone does not have any. 
Boone is going to try it here. She pops it over the head of Steele. A beautiful mistake if you're a Sooners fan. It looked like it should have been an out until it wasn't. Two on, nobody out. Yeah, Sydney Steele is charging so hard from third base, anticipating that bunt, and with the speed that Kennedy provides at throwing 70-plus miles an hour, it's like she pushes it past Sydney Steele. She probably saw her out of the corner of her eye, and because Kennedy throws more up in the zone, she gets the bottom of it, but it works out like a push bunt to on for OU. It's only Oklahoma's sixth bunt single of the season. And the eight and the nine hitters are on. And Tori Nyberg is going to try to give Nisa Kennedy a little bit of extra confidence. Because Oklahoma is about to propel the most fearsome top of the lineup in college softball into the game with nobody out and two on. Jada Coleman, the Big 12 Player of the Year. Ball. Her base hit was the difference maker on Thursday. Two on, two out in the fifth inning. Coleman slashed an 0-2 pitch off of Kennedy into left field for an RBI single with a run scoring on an error. Oh. Well up and in for ball two. Kennedy's used to being in counts the other way around. A lot of 0-2 counts for her in yesterday's outing. Works from ahead. Not very often you get yourself in a hitter's count like this. Oh, three and out. Many in college softball have had a flair for the dramatic, like the young woman at the plate, over these last three years. Started all 182 games of her Oklahoma career, oh. and Coleman takes strike two, and will have to return to the batter's box. Tried to sell it, but you know, he got that second strike with a screwball. Where do you look here? You want the sure thing, you go back to that screwball. If you want a little risky thing, go to the rise up and in. See if she'll take it or get a swing and miss. Coleman in the air to left field. Not well hit. Eliek is there. And Kennedy comes from 3-0 down to the Big 12 Player of the Year to get the first out. That is a massive out to get Jada Coleman to easily pop up like that. Here's the pitch sequence and how Kennedy attacked her. Up and in early in the at bat. Could not get Coleman to chase. Could not get a called strike until this pitch to get her back in it. The screwball for the second strike. And then she goes back to the rise ball. She trusted it. And Jada Coleman pops it out. Coleman one for four. Now Jennings. The birthday girl, who is 0 for 3. Strike one. 72 up and away. A home run here would vault Tiare Jennings ahead of her former teammate, Jocelyn Allo, into the all-time World Series RBI lead. But they take any kind of a hit. Strike two. 
This is a career 527 hitter with runners in scoring position. 517 this season. Numbers that could not be believed if we didn't see so many big hits from T.R.A. Jennings over her three years. Those numbers just went down. Kennedy throws a rise ball to the sky, and she is one out away from getting out of this thing. Just relying on that rise ball going up against Jennings, getting her to swing and miss at this pitch three times. An unbelievable job of Kaneshiro to be able to go up and get that pitch, hold on to it to secure that second out. And with two on and two out, Patty Gesso is going to give Nigel Kennedy a different look here. Jocelyn Erickson, a left-handed batter, will pinch hit in the number three spot. Haley Lee 0 for 8 at the World Series, so it's the freshman Erickson who's had a phenomenal year, over 1,000 OPS, including 18 extra base hits. Strike one to Erickson. And this is probably why they're bringing in a left-handed hitter against Kennedy. Lefties hitting 160 points higher off of her than right-handed hitters. Haley Lee, who was in that position, a righty. Ball. One and one. Terrific freshman, Erickson, one of the top players in her recruiting class out of Phoenix, Arizona. She fouls away strike two. But Kevin, you think about how much that OU and JT Gasso, their hitting coach, is looking into the numbers to pinch hit for a hitter like Haley Lee, your three-hole hitter, getting close to 400, 14 home runs, 51 RBI, and you trust your gut to put a left-handed hitter in because the numbers say so. Go ahead, run the pinch runner Hodge at second. Boone behind her at first. The one two pitch Ball. is off the plate. Asia Kennedy's 50th pitch in relief is a 2 2. You think about how difficult this is for Jocelyn Erickson, just a freshman. Coach calls on you to come in in a tie game, seventh inning, runner in scoring position. These are the moments at Oklahoma they prepare you for in. October and November when they have these intense scrimmages the deepest team in college softball They call on Erickson off the bench against Kennedy And Kennedy missed it Just barely and Jessica Allister certainly didn't think so She goes to her change up I guess it just missed a little high but this looks like a strike at the top of the zone to me Kennedy thought she had it. Wow. A three and two for Erickson. The runners will be in motion. Erickson in the left field. Eck is there. And Stanford escapes. Two on, nobody out against the top of the Sooner lineup. Harry Houdini never pulled a stunt like this. All the emotion. All the fire, all the passion of semifinal Monday on display at the World Series. The top seeded Sooners and the ninth seeded Cardinal going toe to toe in a game that Stanford must have.
They win, they force the if necessary game. They are looking to make the championship series for the first time. Oklahoma trying to get there for the fourth straight season and trying to extend an NCAA Division I record 50 game win streak. They have not lost since February the 19th, Oklahoma. A run from Stanford in the seventh would change that. Caitlin Lim first against Jordy Ball. And this Oklahoma pitching staff, after giving up a two-run homer to Kylie Chung in the first, has shut Stanford down. Nicole May for four scoreless innings after the first, and Jordy Ball on in relief. Got out of a first and second nut-out jam in the sixth. Can tell how focused that Jordy Ball is to her pitch, she was going to her motion. Kinsey Hansen and the home plate umpire were standing up, called timeout, and she just was so locked in before that pitch, kind of looking down at the ground in front of her. He's allowed one earned run, two total in this NCAA tournament. Jordy Ball. Lim lays down a foul bunt. For Stanford, it has been Vauder and Kennedy and all kinds of epic energy defensively, but can they get a hit? Can they get a run? They've still only scored five runs in four games here at the World Series, and nothing since the first inning today. Lim swings through strike two. And the thing that you know about Stanford, they're very comfortable in close games. Went back and looked at their schedule and all their scores, and 27 of their 61 games were decided by two runs or less. That is 44% of their games have been close games like that. They know how to play in these. They know how to win in close games. Caitlin Lim, who had a real surge to begin her NCAA tournament, changing her approach in the plate to more of a slide step, is still hitless in the World Series, 0 for 10, with five strikeouts. Trying to set the stage for the red-hot Sydney Steele. Lim, left field, a looper, and Lyons is there to track it down. Well, they have margin for error still, Oklahoma. They can lose this game and win the if necessary game, but they're trying to hold on to the longest win streak in Division I history. 106 days since Baylor beat them, February the 19th, looking to become the second team to three-peat in Division I history. And here is Sidney Steele. In the seventh spot, but Packing a punch for Stanford in this World Series with an RBI double and a home run against Alabama, homering off an All-American in Montana Fouts on Friday. Steal right side. That's going to get down for a base hit. And the winning run is at first for the Cardinal, courtesy of Sidney Steele. Saw her sister play here when she was a young girl, and the way that she has stepped up at the World Series this year, it's almost like when she was in the stand, she was visualizing herself play here. And now that she's getting the chance, she's making the most of it. Steal only two for two as a base stealer, not a big threat to go. And the number eight hitter, Ellie Eck, will stand in. If Stanford's going to win it, they're going to have to get some production from a part of the order that typically doesn't provide it. Eck, 5 for 35, 5 walks, and only one extra base hit on the year. And a 2-0 count. 
One of the players who's had to play more after a torn ACL suffered by Kalen Cope midway through the season. Cope, who was their leading home run hitter at the time with the team, but not able to play. Strike one. You look at the pitching numbers, Kevin, that Stanford has had in the postseason and here in Oklahoma City at the Women's College World Series. And if they just had a little bit more offense with the pitching numbers that they put up, again, absolutely unstoppable. A one loss in the postseason, and it was to Jordy Ball in Oklahoma a couple days ago. Outscoring teams 35-9 in the NCAA tournament. It's nine runs allowed in nine games. That's pretty good. Three and two for Elliott. River Mailer on deck in the nine spot for Stanford. The payoff from the All-American ball. That goes down swinging well under a rise ball for out number two. And she continued to go to that rise ball within this at bat and Eck took it and took it and took it until this full count rise ball went ball Brings it down just a little bit more to make it more enticing to get the strikeout. Now River Mailer, who re-entered the game after NATO pinch hit for her in the fifth. Mailer lays a bunt down to ball. And this, a game that deserved extras, is going to go there. Middle of the Oklahoma order, Brito, Sanders, and Hanson do up. Nyjah Kennedy due to face them. Three scoreless in relief for the freshman of the year against the middle of the OU order coming up. Back in the top of the seventh, whenever Stanford was facing Oklahoma, Torres led off the inning with a double, and then Riley Boone was able to have a bunt single, a push bunt. It looked like things were rolling for Oklahoma with two on and nobody out in the top of the lineup coming up, but she gets Coleman to fly out, Jennings to strike out. And then Erickson, the pinch hitter, to also fly out. She stepped up when her back was against the wall like she has done all postseason long in the very few times that she's gotten into trouble this postseason. Oklahoma's third venture into extra innings this year. Stanford's fifth. Oklahoma's 2-0, Stanford's 4-0. Rauder started it. Kennedy looking to finish it. Home run by Chung in the first inning made it 2 nothing Cardinal. Oh, you got a sack fly from Torres in the second, a home run from Coleman in the third. What a day it has been already. What a day it promises to be. Florida State and Tennessee will open their half of the semis at six locals, seven Eastern here on ESPN. We'll play another game only if Stanford wins. Oh, it's an Oklahoma victory, and the Sooners in this double elimination format would head straight to the Champ Series, a Stanford win, and we would play a second game about 45 minutes after the conclusion of game one. Melissa Brito, Sidney Sanders, and Kinsey Hansen, a fearsome middle of the order, and a 1 1 count on Brito. She's walked, struck out, and been hit by a pitch in this game. Oklahoma's only unanimous first team All American. Well, got to get the sunglasses back. Taylor Gindelsberger. Risky move there. Bit of a shiny day right now. 
they might be broke. Well, then maybe yeah. not that risky. <laughs> uh, there's not an extra pair lying around. We couldn't have gotten them. Uh, Jessica Allister's coming out. I think now they found sunglasses. Yep, here they come. Start the sunglass relay. Emily Young will run them out. Little relay. And they go on top of the visor. Yeah. Glad we did. What? We called timeout then <laughs> to put the visor or it's, the glasses on top of yeah. the visor. It's fashion. <laughs> Guido, shortstop. Young. Makes the play in time. Is not too tired after running the sunglasses out to center. Patty Gasso to make another pinch hitting move. And another left handed bat up, Quincy Lilio. Lilio will bat for Sidney Sanders. Number 43. Casual 451 on base percentage off the bench. Only four strikeouts, 51 plate appearances. Oh. Win or lose, what Nigeria Kennedy is doing today and what Nigeria Kennedy has done in this World Series. It's the kind of week, it's the kind of performances we'll never forget. We know Oklahoma won't. Oh, it's in. Yeah, it's just been so special to watch her. And it seems like when she's in the circle, she has been absolutely unhittable at times. To not, I mean, uncontactable, if that's a word. I mean, mm. to, get a, <laughs> to get a hit off of her is hard, but to even make contact off of her has been difficult as well. And to you hear her talk about how special it is to be out here, and this is a dream come true. Her family from Kansas, pretty close by, has been in attendance watching her. It can be a lot of pressure with the attention that she's gotten, but she just hasn't been phased. Pop up is grabbed by Kanashiro. Well, it was last year in the NCAA tournament, specifically regionals. Nyjah Kennedy was sitting at home with her family watching the Stanford team go to work. And she just remembers being so fired up and could not wait to get to Stanford yeah, to continue the work that they did. So a year of waiting, and you know what? It's paying off. And at first, she thought, Courtney, that she could only go maybe four hours away to college, she told us. but. First day the coaches were allowed to contact her was September 1st, 2020. Jess Hallister called her and Nigel said, you know what, maybe I can go to California. Took her official visit. Couldn't imagine herself anywhere else. I'm sure though she did imagine herself here on this field. Grew up watching the World Series. Idolizing Sam Shaw at Oklahoma State. And then of course Odyssey Alexander who beat Oklahoma two years ago on this field in that very circle where the Sooners would take down James Madison a couple of times and get to the champ series in that epic postseason. Well this inning is far from finished because it's Kinsey Hansen who's delivered maybe the biggest hit of Oklahoma's season just a week or so ago. And that super regional game two against Clemson. And she did it, by the way, in the count she is in right now, 0 and 2. And on a rise ball, look at where that pitch up in the zone against Valerie Cable, the national player of the year. So we got Oklahoma back into the game, and you knew at that time it was going to be very difficult for Clemson to come away with the win after that swing. 
So she took the National Player of the Year deep on 0-2. How about the National Freshman of the Year? I think that's why that rise ball was well out of the zone. Kenzie Hansen in the spotlight once more. On a two strike, two out pitch. Hansen pops it up into right field. Lim is there, and it's a 1 2 3 8 for Nigeria Kennedy. Two fifth year seniors will lead off the bottom of the eighth for Stanford. Taylor Gindelsberger and Emily Young trying to keep their careers alive for at least one more game. Chung hits a long fly to left, sending Moon back, and this ball is long gone. Jada Coleman, the Big 12 Player of the Year, delivers a long ball against Elena Vonner. The two home runs in this epic semifinal game. The first of two only if Stanford wins an Oklahoma victory and they advance to the champ series Florida State and Tennessee in just over four hours will take the field for their half of the bracket FSU needs one win Tennessee needs two in his double elimination format Jordy ball with two scoreless innings of relief will face the top of the Stanford order and Taylor Gindelsberger. And the fifth year senior slaps one to the left side off the glove of Lions and a base hit. A three for four day for Gindelsberger. And the winning run is aboard with nobody out. Gindelsberger has been aggressive in her last two at bats and it's helped her out. Swung early in the count, made things happen. She gets so jammed up on that pitch. Inside, up and in on her hands, but just still Figures out a way to get it away from Grace Lyons. Her second three hit game of an amazing tournament. How do you play it now with Emily Young, who has tried to bunt, who has swung away? She'll swing away and she hit it nearly in the same spot as in that last at bat in the sixth. And now is when the right handed hitters start to come up for Stanford. There's three in a row Young, Kanashiro, and Chung. Righty's have a better average off of Jordy Ball than left-handed hitters. Oklahoma's gonna keep Brito a couple of steps in at third, just in case. There's the butt laid down by Young, dead and beautifully, and she is safe! A butt base hit! The winning run is at second with Neri and out to be found. Well, what set up that bunt was the hit that Emily Young had in her last at bat when she was able to sneak one down the line, and then there, there was that foul ball in this at bat. So Brito really not really expecting it, knowing that she has to play a little bit further back, respecting the poolside power of Young and being aggressive on that inside pitch. Brito does everything that she can, but Young, the athlete, able to leg it out. Let's see if Stanford chooses to bunt now with Kanashiro. She will square and she will lay it down foul. Ali Kanashiro without a sacrifice bunt on the season. She is their RBI leader with 40. With Chung on deck, will the bunt play stay on with a strike? Ball. The bunt is still on as ball misses. It's a Stanford team that a lot of folks thought should have been much higher than a nine seed. It was a pretty shocking result given their RPI and strength of schedule. Had to go on the road in supers and sweep Duke. Then had to face Oklahoma day one here at the World Series. Bunt is popped up and caught by Brito. 
And Stanford gives away the first out. Your Oklahoma, that is exactly what you wanted. Jordy Rise Ball, er, <laughs> Jordy Ball able to go to her Rise Ball. That's her nickname. <laughs> and she can also throw a drop too. So in that situation, she likes to mix both her drop ball and her Rise Ball, of course, in a bunt situation. Got to go to that Rise Ball and get a pop out. <laughs> I'm sure you're not the first person to call her Jordy Rice Ball. <laughs> Here's Kylie Chung. First pitch swinging that's popped up and that is out of play. Again, you're going to see Chung back off, back off the plate to give herself room on the inner half. That's the spot that Jordy likes to go to up and in with her Rice Ball. She throws more to her arm side of the plate. C2 with. Jordy will mix in a changeup here. We haven't seen her throw that pitch a lot. But with Chung trying to be so quick to the inner half, it'd be a good time to throw it. A two-run homer in the first for Chung. Ball. It's inside, nearly hit her. Sophomore who did not sniff the lineup for a long time, Jessica Allister told us, came in also as a pitcher, that designated player position held by a couple of different players. They had some injuries. Kylie kept giving them good at-bats in practice, found her way into the starting lineup. Off speed, a beauty from Ball. Hey, that pitch was just around the corner. The way that Chung has been swinging the bat, and how much room she has given herself in the inner half, looking for something in, in 70 miles an hour. Did you try to go back out there if you're Jordy? I do a drop ball low and away. She went in instead. Still a drop ball though, giving her a lot of different looks. Let's not forget how great Jordy Ball has been in this postseason. As amazing as this run has been for Nigeri Kennedy, we can almost take Jordy Ball for granted because she pitches for this loaded team and with this loaded offense. But ever since she stepped on campus, she's been as dominant as any pitcher in the country. Two on, one out here in the eighth. And Ball gets Chuck. A strikeout on a wicked off-speed pitch. Gets Chung on the changeup. Went to it a couple of times within that at-bat. She had not thrown it all that much in her relief outing, but she knew she could get her with that pitch. When you're so worried about 70 at your knees or even up and in on your hands, that changeup just gets set up perfectly. It's up to Emily Schultz. On one. Only four for 25 without an RBI in the NCAA tournament. Another fifth year senior who has hoisted this program back to be among the national elite. Strike two on Schultz. Jordy Ball has been untouchable with two strikes. The Women's College World Series, but really all year long. But especially here, she's upped her game with two strikes. When she gets ahead, she puts you out. Only one hit with two strikes against her in the Women's College World Series. Opponents just one for 31. Indelsberger and Young, the first two hitters reached to lead off the inning. First and second, nobody out for the heart of the order. And if Stanford does not get this run across, will they rue their best chance?
Strike three. We'll see you in the ninth. Two on, nobody out. No problem for Jordy. Lefties on the year against Jordy Ball with two strikes, hitting 055. This time, it's no different. She rarely gives up hits with two strikes, especially when the game is on the line. You know Jordy Ball will step up. Nigeri Kennedy early in her relief outing was mixing her change up and then she decided to wait until a little bit later to mix in her rise ball. But this change up had Oklahoma hitters out in front of her pitches anticipating 70 up in the zone. Instead, she brings that rise ball down. You see the shadow of where they are trying to get that pitch well out in front. It set up the rise ball later in the game with that rotation that is making that rise ball have sharp break and getting these hitters to chase oftentimes. Four innings of relief in back of Elena Vauder. Three hits, no runs. Kennedy has struck out five. There's the line for the national freshman of the year who came into the game with a 0 0.48 ERA and that now sits at 0 0.47. Grace Lyons bats now. 7 8 9 for Oklahoma. One other item of note. There is apparently some weather, some severe weather, somewhere around us in the area. The scoreboard told us in between innings. Lyons blasts one to left, down the line, off the base of the wall. Going for two. The throw from Eck is late. It's a leadoff double for Grace Lyons. Her first hit of the World Series. As this game goes on, you have to start to give the advantage to Oklahoma even more because they're continuing to get more looks off of Nigeria Kennedy. Lyons sees this rise ball that is up in the zone and just stays committed to get her barrel on top of that pitch for more of a line drive hit toward the left side. Leadoff double for Grace Lyons, the senior captain. Alita Torres will re enter after Lyons picks up only her third hit of the NCAA tournament. She's had so much experience in Oklahoma. Two time All American. You are not going to keep Grace Lyons down for long. And we'll see how Oklahoma chooses to play this with Torres as one of the Sooners four sacrifice bunts on the year. Oh. She will not show bunt. Alina Torres is sack fly. A double play ground out and a double. Two good at bats today. In a game where neither team has scored since the third. Well. All the way, that's a little high. Yeah, and you're seeing Oklahoma just handle that pitch better than what they did earlier in this game and the first time that they saw her the other day. The more and more looks that you see off of that rise ball, the easier it is to identify and take that pitch as it's going to continue to rise out of the zone. On the ground to the left side, Steele looks back the runner and makes a strike of a throw to first. Job well done to look back Lions for the first out. Just saw at the end of the bench Reagan Kraus come in from the Stanford bullpen, their number three starter, who has not appeared in a game in the tournament. No one's pitched an inning in the NCAA tournament other than Kennedy or Vauder for Stanford. One away, here's Riley Boone. Oklahoma today just two for 15 with runners on base. One of those two was Boone's pop up bunt single in the seventh. This one's popped up. Kanashiro does not have a play. 
You know, we saw Nigerie Kennedy pitch the first time against Oklahoma. She was hitting 74, 75 on the gun. Here late in this game, it's been a long week. It's been hot in Oklahoma, and she's hitting 69, 70 right now. Makes all the difference for these Oklahoma hitters and their reaction time. Boone slaps it toward the middle. It's the shortstop Young with a five play. Lions gets to third. Stanford gets the second out. And Tori Nyberg is going to make a visit before Nyjah Kennedy sees Jada Coleman for a third time today and a sixth time this week. Remember, Oklahoma can lose this game and still advance to the champ series in its double elimination format. Stanford must win to stay alive. But the longest win streak in Division I history is also hanging in the balance for the back-to-back -back national champions. Well, this has been must-see TV all week. Kennedy versus Coleman. The last RBI in the game came off of her bat six innings ago, and she will not have an RBI here. How about an intentional walk to face a player who will probably soon become the all-time RBI leader in the history of the World Series? What do you think of this? I think on paper it might look better than some other numbers, but Kennedy has had more success off of Jennings. Oh. On her to strike out comes to my mind four times. She's 0 for 4 with four strikeouts. That's why they're leaning to do this. And again, you think of the lefty-righty splits. We're thinking about all these numbers, these situational numbers. <laughs> <laughs> the intentional walk back spike. If you had a softball bingo card you were keeping your whole life, that's the first time you could check that one off. <laughs> oh, man. They celebrate the little victories, Oklahoma. And Tiara Jennings, the first team All-American, will try to give them a big one. First and third, two out, 2-2, two -two, top of the ninth. Here we go. He's had so many swings and misses, too. Whenever Jennings has faced Kennedy with that rise ball, takes that first pitch that's one of the better strikes, actually, that she's seen in her at-bats off of her. Lions the go-ahead run at third. Jennings, pop-up. No room for Kaneshiro, and it's out of play. And T.R.A. Jennings is one strike away from a fifth consecutive strikeout against Nigeria Kennedy. She's consistently thrown her rise balls, too, and her other at-bats getting her to chase out of the zone early in the count for her to go to that rise ball. I should say there is one fly out in there, so 0 for 5, 4 Ks. But still no hits for Jennings against Kennedy here at the World Series. 0-2. Oh, Almost hit our booth. <laughs> 182 games, T.R.A. Jennings has never not once struck out three times in a single game. Into the World Series, she had struck out six times, or eight times. She struck out four against Kennedy alone. Can she find that magic moment? Yes, she can! Right center field, Oklahoma has the lead. Coleman will 
score. Jennings ties the World Series RBI record on the happiest of birthdays. The inevitable Oklahoma machine finally comes through. It's 4-2. to second guess pitch calls. I hate it because they have all the information. They know their pitchers the best, but why you would go to an 0-2 curveball when you have struck out Jennings on a changeup and a rise ball in this game. And look how close this pitch is. Jennings says, thank you for not giving me another rise ball. That is a pitch that she can hit. She stays on it and she drives in two for Oklahoma. Remember, they intentionally walked Coleman to get to her. She steps up and scores that. Jocelyn Erickson to shortstop. A little tricky spin on that play. Erickson is safe. Jennings to third. You have to be perfect. It's an unreasonable standard to hit, but it's the standard that's been set by the Oklahoma University Sooners. First and third after an E6. Alyssa Brito with a pop-up. Will get out of play. scoring hits against Kennedy this week came on 0-2 pitches. Jada Coleman Thursday and a ball left out over too much of the plate. T.R.A. Jennings on an 0-2 pitch here that caught too much of the plate. Just hard to fathom if we've ever seen anything like this. We've seen great teams. We've seen a three-peat in UCLA. We've seen the Bruins and the Arizona Wildcats dominate the sport in the 80s and the 90s, into the 2000s. But a team that scores like this, a team that gets two strike hits like this, they are one of one. Strike three ends the inning. A few pitches too late. Stanford has the six, seven, eight hitters coming up to salvage its season. Oklahoma has the lead thanks to T.R.A. Jennings. Tying the World Series RBI record on her 21st birthday and giving Oklahoma a two-run edge. The Oklahoma Sooners, winners of 50 straight games, had not scored since the third inning until this from T.R.A. Jennings. Where they intentionally walked Jada Coleman to get to Jennings. They went more up in the zone with the rise ball. Got her to chase a bit, but an 0-2 pitch. That curveball, it's left up too sweet over the plate. I would have liked to have seen that changeup that she threw to Brito to get the last out and the strikeout against her before going to that curveball. It's a mistake, and these Oklahoma hitters just make you pay for those mistakes. T.R.A. Jennings tying Jocelyn Allo for the World Series career record. She's only a junior, by the way. And Stanford has three outs Ball. left in its season against Jordy Ball. The Cardinal have not scored since the first inning. They've got the six, seven, and eight hitters up, Lim, Steele, and Eck, who are a combined one for nine. 
And they're going to try to solve Jordy Ball, who's given up two runs in the whole of the postseason. A pop up from Lim will sneak out of play. Stanford has had some chances in this game. First and second, nobody out in the sixth inning. First and second, nobody out in the eighth inning. Both for the heart of the order. But in both scenarios, Ball retired Kaneshiro, Chung, and Schultz. Stanford never got a runner even to third. Cap you can muster if you're in the Stanford dugout. You find it, you hope, and you pray. Lim fighting to stay alive against Ball. And Jordy Ball has been sharp since she came in, and every inning she's had at least a runner on and four strikeouts in her relief appearance. All of those strikeouts coming with runners on. A struck out now. 15 against Stanford. In 10 innings here at the World Series. And a Stanford team that has hit just 26 home runs and has scored just five runs in four games at the World Series. It's going to have to find a way to get two against the best pitching staff and the best defense in the nation. Two and two for Lim. We'll work it full. Here's what's coming. Uh oh. That's not a filter. Lim trying to get on base, give Steele a chance to tie it. He's alive again. Everybody clap your hands. Clap, clap, clap your hands. Jessica Allister's team at the World Series for the first time in 19 years. Led this game 2 0 after one. Heading a 2 2 tie from the third inning on. Have not been able to solve this Oklahoma staff. Strikes out in a foul two. What a way in the ninth. It's three strikeouts in a row for Jordy Ball. That rise ball has been working this game for the majority of them, and she gets Lim. Chase this pitch, good location. Actually looked like Kenzie Hansen was setting up on the outside corner. It ends up going inside, but good enough for the strikeout anyway. Now Steele can not tie it. Strike one. Rise ball in this game has just been jumping for ball. Could be the last at bat of Sidney Steele's career. He'll be working on a master's in laboratory animal sciences. Will be just a student next year. It's been a four year starter for this program. Senior class that they are going to remember forever at Stanford for bringing the Cardinal back from the dead to the ranks of the national elite. Most wins in 14 years. First World Series in 19. It's on the brink, though. Strike three to steal. Four straight strikeouts for ball, and now Oklahoma. Needs a single out. A 
One out to get. Eliak in the eighth spot. Strike one. stands at second with Jordy Ball in the circle who was built for moments like this one strike away Oklahoma can taste another date with destiny In the air to left field, Riley Boone is there, and Oklahoma does it again. The unstoppable, undeniable, unkillable Sooners win their 51st consecutive game, and they are back in the championship series for a fourth straight postseason.